Today we're going to take a look at how to create footnotes and an annotated bibliography using EasyBib and Microsoft Word. So we're going to go through the process of making an annotated bibliography and making footnotes for your document. And at this stage I'm not too worried about having the perfect format, the perfect MLA format, and the perfect Chicago, or the perfect Chicago or APA format for your citations. I'm really just interested in seeing that you know how to make the bibliography, you know how to make footnotes, and you're giving credit for photos or quotations or paraphrasing that you're borrowing from other documents or other websites, etc. So a very easy way to make your citations is to use a program called EasyBib. So just Google EasyBib this page will come up. Click on Create Citations and, and then you can choose whether you're going to be citing a website, a book, or a journal. So let's do say one website and one book here. For a website, uh, let's say you had used a site about Bobby Hall. So let's search for sites on Bobby Hall and down here this is the site that you use. So we're going to cite that. The information comes back. Continue. And this is where you can put more information in. I don't want you spending too much time getting all the details. Often it's very difficult to find out when something was published on the internet, etc. So once you put any extra information that you have in there, then you can complete the citation. And what should come back, here, here's the citation that we just made. These other ones were ones that I made earlier. So let's say now we want to create a new citation, create a new citation. Let's say this time it is a book, and let's say that book that we read was about Gordie Howe. So then we try to find the book that we read. So maybe it's this one here. So I click Cite. Information comes back. I can press Continue. So sometimes you're citing the whole book or maybe you're just citing a chapter or a section of the book. So let's say it's a chapter and the chapter was, well, chapter three, how about? In some books, each chapter is written by a di different author. They're usually called compilations. Uh, but let's imagine that in this book, we just have one source author. And perhaps the information that we got was from pages 44 and 45 of this particular book. So we complete our citation. And so it's been added, this one on Gordie Howe. Now let's suppose this is everything that we've consulted. So some of these books, maybe we just read them and got a few ideas from them but we didn't pull any quotations from it. We didn't quote, pull any pictures. We didn't really paraphrase anything. We just, it was a book we read and we want to state it on our bibliography. So all of that should be in here. Click on copy all. Then you can go to your paper. And on the last page here, I'm going to write annotated bibliography. And I'll explain why it's annotated in a minute. But all you do now is paste. So here is all of our sources. And let's say we had been typing, we typed a bunch of stuff, and then we had a quotation and we wanted to reference that. What we do is to insert a footnote. So the easiest way to do this is just go to tell me what you want to do and then write insert footnote. If you do, this menu comes up. We want our footnotes, of course, at the bottom of the page. They're going to be numbered consecutively. And I'll click Insert. So we get a 1 down here at the bottom. 
Now we can go back to our annotated bibliography here and let's say that quotation came from this source. We'd copy this and then we'd paste it back here. Now let's suppose that we did a bunch of other typing and then we wanted to reference that same source again. What we do is type in that original reference number one and then we'd superscript it. So come up here to superscript, get it raised. So now we're citing that same source on two occasions. And then maybe you and then maybe you type a bunch more and then you want to go on to your second reference. We'd go up here again to insert footnote and same process again. Click, go down and find this source, this citation, copy and paste. And then imagine that we did a bunch more typing and then we got to this figure that we borrowed from one of our sources. Uh, what you'd like to do here is right click and then go to insert a caption. So this is going to be our first figure. Um, we can call it, give it a name, we'll say Bobby and Don. And we'll click on OK. And then we're going to insert another footnote. So I'll go back to insert footnote. So we're going to go on to the next one, click it, and we get a three right here. And now we have to go back and see where we found it. So maybe we found it right here. That was a picture from this textbook here, page 23-24. So we copy and we paste. So once you've done these references for everything that was a quote or it could have been a photo or a diagram or it might have just been paraphrasing. So if you come across a unique idea in a book, but you paraphrase that idea, you still have to give credit to the person that had that unique idea in the first place. So once again, you'd reference that. The last step here is to do the annotations in the bibliography. And there's a few things that you'd kind of like to write in here. For instance, if, uh, if, if you're using a government site, then these tend to be particularly reliable so sites, and you'd want to mention that. So your an annotation here might be statistics retrieved from gover governmental site. Now, of course, that particular reference is not a governmental site, but if you are using a governmental site, you should state something like that. And perhaps this uh, Learn About Bobby Hall, it wasn't something that you referenced in your text, but it was an important source for you because you gained a lot of background information. So you might state here, background information was obtained here. So for most of these you'd like to come up with an annotation. Sometimes there's nothing really important or vital that you can say, but you want to give the reader a general sense of what you are doing with that source. And that's all for today folks. Thank you very much.